the details. Reserve Bank Governor Rakti Kanta Das on Thursday asked the corporate sectors to come forward in a big way and set up the investments for the growth of Indian's economy as India's growth trajectory remains strong. Driven by key economic factors gaining momentum, speaking at the FIBAC 2024 Banking for Vikshad Bharat event in Mumbai Das said it is the time for the corporate sector to come forward in a big way to set up investments as visible signs of private investments happening. Das also noted that the Indian economy is at a pivotal moment, experiencing significant changes across various sectors and poised for substantial shifts. Our nation's progress towards becoming an advanced economy is supported by a unique blend of factors, young and dynamic population and diverse economy, Das said. Shifts and buttressed our stability and growth story would include, and I have listed six of them, there are many more, but I have listed six major reforms which have indeed resulted in a paradigm shift and which have really sort of given the necessary push to strengthening our economy and to take it to the next level of development. And these six reforms, apart from others, of course, which I have listed, <coughs> these six would include, number one, Shifting from administered exchange rate of the rupee to a market determined regime. Number two, stoppage of automatic monetization of budget deficit financing by the Reserve Bank. Number three, enactment of the FRBM Act. Number four, introduction of the flexible inflation targeting framework. Number five, enactment of the insolvency and bankruptcy court. And number six, implementation of the goods and services tax, that is GST. Each of these six reforms have yielded long-term positive outcomes. These reforms need to be augmented by reforms in land, labor, and agricultural markets. While we have made some progress in these areas, lot more not needs to be done both at the national and subnational levels. Improvements in ease of doing business, especially at local levels, will go a long way in boosting our competitiveness. Now, after highlighting on these growth uh, aspects and the growth story, the second area which I would like to highlight is on inflation and monetary policy. In early 2022, the flare-up in food, commodity and energy prices following the outbreak of the war in Ukraine led to a sharp increase in inflation. This was further compounded by a series of adverse domestic shocks. The decisive steps taken by the Reserve Bank, together with the supply side measures from the government and the cooling of international commodity prices have led to a downward shift in inflation from early 23-24, that is from the early part of the financial year 23-24. Nevertheless, the pace of disinflation, nevertheless, the pace of disinflation is frequently interrupted by volatile and elevated food inflation. It is the headline inflation that matters. It is the headline inflation with food inflation having a weight of 46% in the headline inflation which the people understand with the monsoon progressing well and the healthy kharif sowing raising prospects of better harvest there is greater optimism now that food inflation outlook could become more favorable during the course of the year however i must add and emphasize that we have to remain watchful of how the forces impacting inflation play out. The balance between inflation and growth is now well poised. The balance between inflation and growth is well poised. You know, our monetary policy, the legal framework which the enactment in the Reserve Bank of India Act has mandated the Reserve Bank to achieve is to maintain price stability, which is defined in terms of maintaining inflation at 4% with a tolerance band of 2% on either side, that is, it should remain between 2 to 6%, but the target is 4%. So the mandate given to the Reserve Bank under the Reserve Bank of India Act is to maintain price stability defined in terms of 4% target plus minus 2% while keeping in mind the 
requirements of growth while keeping in mind the objective of growth. So from that perspective, I would like to say that our analysis shows that at the current juncture and also based on our outlook, the balance between inflation and growth is well poised. We must successfully navigate the last mile of dis disinflation and preserve the credibility of flexible inflation targeting framework, which is a major structural reform. The best contribution that monetary policy can make for sustainable growth is to maintain price stability. I would now like to turn to the third component of what I wanted to say that relates to financial sector, strengthening the foundations for the future. India's financial sector has repeatedly demonstrated its ability to overcome challenges and crises. As a regulator, we have done our best in during the, you know, during successive uh, uh, global shocks which the Indian economy faced along with so many other countries. And I must mention here that it was ultimately the joint effort, it was ultimately the cooperation between the Reserve Bank as a regulator and the major and the financial sector players like the banks, the NBFCs and other financial sector players. It is this active cooperation and it is this open door communication between us during these periods of successive shocks which has enabled our country to be where it is today with, in terms of financial stability. So the financial sector has repeatedly demonstrated its ability to overcome the challenges and the successive shocks from various global factors. The financial sector showed remarkable resilience during the COVID and also in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, all key indicators of the financial sector demonstrate robust health. This resilience combined with other forces can act as critical that driving forces for India's future. In this milieu, financial sector needs to even further deepen, deepen financial inclusion, broaden access to credit and other financial products and support overall inclusive growth. It also needs to drive innovation in digital banking, foster sustainable finance and build robust financial ecosystem that can withstand emerging challenges and facilitate higher trajectory of growth. With the financial sector now in a strong position, it is our collective responsibility to safeguard this stability, especially in an environment of heightened global uncertainty. Financial institutions must continuously